स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया hello everyone in my today's lecture about uh, insurance law we are going to discuss about irdai that is insurance regulatory and development authority of india i am dr naresh mehpal senior assistant professor from faculty of law university of delhi in our previous discussions we have already came to know what is the nature of insurance what are the functions of the insurance how insurance sector came into existence we have discussed about the hist historical development of insurance globally as well as in indian context thereafter we have discussed about the various principles guiding the formation of any insurance contract and then we have discussed about the concept of insurance and uh, thereafter we have discussed about the formation of life insurance contract and also we have discussed about the premium how it is calculated by the insurer companies and what are the various variables that are guiding factor to determine the insurance uh, premium and uh, we've also discussed about the insurable risk ki what are those risks which are insurables and what are the risks which are non insurable so to in today's lecture we will discuss about the irda irda is basically the authority which is responsible for managing the insurance industry in india so in today's lecture we will cover certain topics such as what is irdai in short i am talking about the irdi and the full form is insurance regulatory development authority of india then we will discuss about the salient features of irdai and then what are the functions of irdi and what are the powers of irdi and what is the power of central government in regard to irdai and when and where to approach if you are having some problems so we will discuss about the concept about the authority of ombudsman also so let us discuss it one by one the very first topic is about the introduction to irda during the period of 1938 to 1950 indian companies enjoyed a steady growth being free from foreign companies competition the insurance act 1938 provided for strong and powerful supervision and control over insurance companies with certain powers such as to power to give directions advice prohibiting investigating inspecting searching seizing to prosecute or to impose fine etc since 1956 insurance sector achieved the objectives of socialist pattern in the spirit the central government took over the management and control over the life assurance business in india and nationalized it the life insurance corporation came into existence by an act of parliament that is life india corporation act 1956 that was a landmark act that was passed by the parliament later on the general insurance business in india was also nationalized with the enactment of general insurance business nationalization act in the year 1972 with the passage of these two acts the role of controller of insurance was diminished over a period of time 
with a view to examine the structure of the in insurance industry and to propose recommendations for the reform in insurance sector in order to make it more competitive and efficient. A committee was set up by the government of India in the year 1993 under the chairmanship of Shri S. R. N. Malhotra, the former governor of Reserve Bank of India. The committee submitted its report in 1994 wherein among other things it recommended setting up of an independent insurance regulatory authority on the lines of SEBI. The government of India accepted the recommendations of the Malhotra committee and established an interim insurance regulatory authority. After a short while, Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority Act that is called IRDA was passed by the parliament in the year 1999 along with amending the Insurance Act 1938, the Life Insurance Corporation Act 1956 and the General Insurance Business Nationalization Act 1972 for the sake of proper control at highest level. So, an independent autonomous authority was established to control and manage the affairs of the insurance in sector in India. Maybe it is your life insurance, maybe it is general insurance, all things were covered and for this purpose various acts were amended for that. The IRDA Act 1999 provides for the establishment of an authority to protect the interests of holder of insurance policies to regulate and to promote and to ensure orderly growth of the insurance industry and for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto. Or not only the matters related properly regulation of the insurance industry, but all the matters which are incidental thereto or connected therewith were also governed by this particular act. The act provided that the authority shall be a body corporate called as Insurance Regulatory Development Authority IRDA and now it is known as IRDAI as amended by the Insurance Laws Amendment Act 2015 to say in 2015 IRDA Act was amended and now the IRDA is known as IRDAI that is Insurance Regulatory Development Authority of India. Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India or IRDAI is an autonomous body in India and that is responsible for managing the insurance industry of India which covers both life insurance and general insurance companies. Insurance sector is one of the vast sector in India that provides various opportunity to the insurance policy holders. Hence, it is governed by a separate body known as the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India or IRDAI. IRDAI works as the head of the insurance industry in India and regulates all the rules and guidelines for different insurance companies in the country. The insurance industry in India has grown extensively over the years as more new companies are entering the market. This has led to increased competition in the industry both in the general and life insurance sectors. All these companies had their own set of rules and guidelines which led to confusion in the market. We know that previously the only the government controlled organizations were issuing the insurance but later on the market was open for the private players also and now many private companies are there in the insurance business in our country and all were there having their own set of rules and guidelines. So, to bring a set model of rules and guidelines to be followed by all insurance companies, 
the insurance regulatory and development authority was established this was the basic purpose because all companies were having their own set of rules and procedures and the market was uncontrolled at that time so to maintain this a, a particular parallel in all the companies the ida was established when talking about the irdai you can say that it acts as a head of the family that guards the needs of each member of the family and maintains a balance between family while it also resolves any differences between the family members and helping them in crisis so ida has the vast power it has the superior power in the matters of the insurance regulations in country when it manages affairs it controls the companies it controls the policies matters it is on equity based principles are followed by the company it treats all in the equal manner and if there is any claim or any dispute by the policy holders it tries to resolve it also so understanding the introduction of irda now let us see what are the aims of irda what it seeks to achieve by establishing this insurance regulatory development authority the first aim is ensuring fair treatment for policy holders and defending their interests the foremost is interest of the policy holders to be protected and to give a fair treatment to the policy holders and to defend their interests if it is taken away by the companies secondly to promote the insurance industries rapid and orderly expansion including annuity and superannuation payments which will benefit the general public as well as supply long term finance for the economy's rapid expansion another aim is to take action when such standards are not sufficient or are not adequately applied so as we have already discussed irda was established to control to manage the affairs of the all the companies maybe it is government or maybe it is private entity and if they are not following such set of rules if they are not following the standards uh, guidelines issued by the ida then it has power to take the actions against those companies another aim is to ensure that the industry operates with the appropriate level of self regulation in accordance with prudential regulation rules and foremost aim of the establishment of ida is to establish encourage oversee and uphold high standards for the competence moral character and financial stability of those it regulates so companies insurance insurers are basically regulated by the elda not only the insurers but the insureds also so to establish and upholding high standards for the competence and moral character in those insurers this is the basic aim of the elda and it regulates the all the insurers companies another aim is to ensure prompt resolution of legitimate claims to stop insurance fraud and other wrong doings and to set up efficient grievance redressal mechanism such as for let us take example such as ombudsman to encourage fairness openness and lawfulness in financial markets that deal with insurance and to create a solid management information system to impose strict requirements for the financial soundness of market participants so this was the aim of establishing the irda now let us see what are the objectives of irda that it seeks to achieve the main objective of the irdi is to enforce 
all the provisions as mentioned under the insurance act hence the mission statement of the irdi includes the following to protect the interest of the policy holder and exercise their fair treatment and to frame policies regularly to ensure that the industry operates without any ambiguity and to regulate the insurance industry in fairness and to ensure its financial soundness it keeps check and balance over the insurance companies it looks into the fairness of to regulate the insurance industry and it also ensures about the financial soundness of any company before issuing any policy to promote fairness orderly conduct and transparency in financial markets dealing with the insurance and to build a reliable management information system to enforce financial soundness in the insurance sector another objective of iadi is to ensure speedy settlement of genuine claims prevent insurance frauds and to prohibit other malpractices while ensuring effective grievance redressal framework other objectives are to issue certificate of registration to new insurance companies to set up rules and regulations to ensure the interests of the policy holders are taken care of to monitor that all claims are settled in all fairness and that no insurer will deny any claim on their own free will and to regulate the code of conduct of the insurance companies insurance intermediaries and others associated with the insurance industry to provide solutions in case of disputes through the irdi ombudsman to control and regulate the rates of insurance to prevent unwanted price hikes in the insurance premium the apex body is responsible for setting the minimum percentage limit of insurance companies for general and life insurance thereby developing both urban and rural sectors so these were certain objectives of the irdi for which the ida was established and it is working over that now let us discuss certain salient features of irdi the preamble of the act reads it as an act to provide for the establishment of an authority to protect the interests of holders of insurance policies to regulate promote and ensure orderly growth of the insurance industry and for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto and further to amend the insurance act 1938 the life insurance corporation act 1956 and general business nationalization act 1972 examining the preamble it is evident that acts provides for establishment of an authority for number 1 protecting the interests of policy holders number 2 regulating promoting and ensuring orderly growth of insurance industry thirdly considering the matter which may be connected or incidental to the above mentioned provisions and fourthly amending certain provisions of the insurance act 
Life Insurance Corporation Act 1956 and the General Insurance Nationalization Act 1972. The act provides that the authority shall be a body corporate with the name the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India. It shall have the perpetual succession and a common seal. Perpetual succession means officers will come and go, but the office will remain there. That means the person who is taking the charge of the office having the perpetual succession. And a common seal means that person can exercise the authority. Subject to the provisions of act, it shall have the power to acquire, hold and dispose of property both movable and immovable. It shall have the contractual capacity and shall by the said name sue or be sued. So, IRDA can sue that is it can file any claim or any case against any person and it can be sued means other parties can also sue IRDAI in the name of IRDI. Another salient feature of IRDI is about the establishment of insurance advisory committee. The act provides for the establishment of a committee to be known as insurance advisory committee consisting of not more than 25 members excluding ex officio members to represent the interests of consumer fora, surveyors, agents, intermediaries, employees associations, etc. The authority can cancel the registration of an insurer either wholly or partly that is in relation to a particular class of insurance business if the insurer makes a default in complying with any directions issued or order made by the authority under the IRDA Act or if the insurer makes a default in complying with or acts in contravention of any requirements of the Companies Act 1956, LIC Act 1956, GIC, Nationalization Act 1972 or FEMA Act 1999. IRDA plays a vital role in highlighting the importance of the policy holders and their best interest while framing policies and regulations. Therefore, it is quintessential to know about the important roles of the IADI. Some of them are, it protects the policy holders interests, it provides for long term funds to enhance the nation's economy, it helps in increasing the growth of insurance sector for the benefit of the policy holders, it set up and forces, promotes and monitor high standards of fair dealing, financial soundness and integrity of the insurance providers. It prohibits fraud and malpractices by setting up a grievance redressal forum and ensuring that the interest of the policy holder is protected. It ensures an optimum amount of self-regulation of the insurance industry. Now coming to the benefits, what are the benefits of the IRDA Act 1999? The IRDA Act 1999 has several benefits for the insurance industry, policy holders and the economy as a whole. Some of the significant benefits are, number one, there is an increase in the competition. The act has led to increased competition among the insurance companies which has resulted in better products, services and pricing for the policy holders. Second importance is consumer protection. The act has strengthened the regulatory framework for the insurance industry providing greater protection to the policy holders against fraudulent practices and unfair treatment by the insurance companies. The act has helped in promoting financial inclusion by making insurance products accessible 
and affordable to the economically weaker sections of society. We know that there are different type of policies by different companies of different premium ranges. This is all due to the promoting of the financial inclusion by the IRDI. Boosting the economy, another benefit. The act has contributed to the growth of the insurance sector which in turn has helped in creating employment opportunities, generating revenue for the government and contributing to the overall economic development of the country. So, getting something about the IRDAI that what are the benefits of setting up this IRDI and what are the aims and objectives of the IRDI, let us see how it functions. What are the functions of IRDAI? The duties, powers and functions of authority inter alia under section 14 shall include the following. A. Issue to the applicant a certificate of registration. Companies, insurance companies can only be registered by getting a certificate of registration from the IRDI and if you want to get a renewal of the insurance sector company in that situation also the company has to apply to the IRDI. So, it issues to the applicant a certificate of registration, renew, modify, withdraw, suspend or even it can cancel such registration. B. Protection of the interests of the policy holders in matters concerning assigning of policy, nomination by policy holders, surrender value of policy and other terms and conditions of contracts of insurance. C. Specifying requisite qualifications, code of conduct and practical training for intermediary or insurance intermediaries and agents. Specifying the code of conduct for law successors. E. Promoting efficiency in the conduct of insurance business. F. Promoting and regulating professional organizations connected with the insurance and reinsurance business. G. Levying fees and other charges for carrying out the purpose of this act. H. Calling for information, undertaking, inspection of, conducting inquiries and investigations including audit of the insurers, intermediaries, insurance intermediaries and other organizations connected with the insurance business. So, these are the primary or you can say overall working of the IRDI, these are the functioning of the IRDI. I to control and regulate the rates, advantages, terms and conditions that may be offered by insurers in respect of general insurance business not so controlled and regulated by the Tariff Advisory Committee under section 64U of the Insurance Act 1938. J specifying the form and manner in which books of accounts shall be maintained and statement of accounts shall be rendered by insurers and other insurance intermediaries. K. Regulating investments of funds by insurance companies. L. Regulating maintenance of margin of solvency. M. Adjudication of disputes between insurers and intermediaries or insurance intermediaries and supervising the functioning of the tariff advisory committee and O specifying the percentage of premium income of the insurer to finance schemes for promoting and regulating professional organizations referred to in clause F. Clause B specifying the percentage of life insurance business and general insurance business to be undertaken by the insurer in the rural or social sector and clause Q exercising such other powers as may be prescribed. So, these are the functions of the IRDAI.
now let us discuss what are the powers of RDI obviously for functioning or to achieve the aims and objectives some authority should be given to any authority that may comes into the existence so let us discuss what are the powers that are been given, given to the IRDI it has been given power to make regulations that is to say the authority may in consultation with the insurance advisory committee by notification make regulations consistent with this act and the rules made there under to carry out the purpose of this act such regulations may provide for all or any of the following matters namely clause a the time and places of meeting of the authority and the procedure to be followed at such meetings including the quorum necessary for the transaction of business under subsection 1 of section 10 clause b says that the transaction of business at its meeting under subsection 4 of section t 10 clause c the terms and other conditions of service of officers and other employees of the authority under subsection 2 of section 12 clause d the powers and functions which may be delegated to committees of the members under subsection 2 of section 23 and clause e that any other matter which is required to be or may be specified by regulations or in respect of which provision is to be or may be made by regulations according to section 16 a fund will be constituted which will be known as the insurance regulatory and development authority of india fund and this fund will be credited to all the governmental grants fees that the authority receives or it will be credited to the amount received by the authority from the sources agreed by the government this fund will also be credited to the percent of the minimum income that the insurers receive the fund constituted will be used for meeting the salaries allowances and remunerations for all the members of the authority and also to meet the expenses incurred by the authority to fulfill its daily functions according to section 17 of the act the authority will have to maintain accounts and annual statements in accordance with the guidelines prescribed by the government the accounts and the annual statements of the authority will be maintained by the controller and auditor general of india if any expense is incurred by the controller and auditor general in maintaining such accounts then the authority will have to pay the cag cag that is the controller authority general of india any person appointed by the cag of india concerning the maintenance of the accounts and annual statements of the authority will have the same rights and privileges as that of the controller and auditor general of india these rights includes the right to demand the production of books of accounts connected vouchers and other relevant documents and papers the audit report prepared by the controller and auditor general of india and other person appointed by him will be forwarded annually to the central government the central government in turn will present it before each house of the parliament section 22 of the act provides that if any action is taken by the authority or the central government in good faith under the provisions of the act then no suit can be filed against them but if any step is taken which is not in accordance with the provisions of the act and is against some person then the person has the right to file a suit against the authority or the central government every rule and every regulation made under this act shall be laid before each house of the parliament 
as soon as maybe after it is made while it is in the session for a total period of 30 days which may be comprised in one session or in two or more successive sessions and if before the expiry of the session immediately following the session or the successive sessions aforesaid both houses agree that the rule or regulation should not be made the rule or regulation shall thereafter have effect only in such modified form or be of no such effect as the case may be so however that any such modification or annulment shall be without prejudice to the validity of anything previously done under that rule or regulation so these are the functionings and powers of irdi what are the powers of central government regarding irdi this has been given in the act itself the central government may if it thinks fit from time to time it may issue directions to the authority on the matters relating to technical and administrative issues the central government may supersede the authority for such period specified and can direct to the authority to furnish such returns statements and other particulars in regard to proposed or existing program undertaken by the authority for promotion and development of the insurance industry and may make rules for carrying out the provisions of this act now let us discuss what are the types of insurance policies controlled by the irdi as we know that the irdi is responsible for regulating and managing the insurance sector in india hence it generally looks after the life and non life or general insurance domains which can be further categorized into types of insurance below are the few types of insurance policies governed by the rdi when it comes to life insurance policies there are different type of life insurance policies such as term plans ulip endowment money back retirement benefits and regarding general insurance policies there are health insurance motor or the vehicle insurance travel insurance home insurance and nowadays gadgets insurance also and property insurance now discussing these types of policies that are controlled by the irdi let us see what are the effect of irdi effects of insurance and regulatory development authority are as following number 1 effects over regulation of insurance sector irdi has a huge impact on the insurance sector of india the authority has to keep a close check on the insurance sector to ensure that the interests of the policy holders remain intact it regulates every activity of the insurance sector effects over policy holders interest protections the main purpose of this authority is to protect the interests of the policy holders and it has kept up with its purpose also another effect is about creating awareness to insurance sector the irdi in order to ensure that the interests of the policy holders are protected has to make sure that policy holders are aware of all the latest policies and plans of the authority that would benefit him this is how the irdi keeps awareing the policy holders effects over insurance market there is a great transformation in the market due to the effects of insurance regulatory and development authority beat with respect of marketing insurance products competition and consumer awareness effects over development of insurance products in order to ensure the growth of the insurance market irdi has to introduce new methods that would help in increasing its efficiency the development of unit linked insurance plans that is known as ulips is the result of privatization of the insurance sector step taken by the insurance regulatory and development authority of india effects over competition in the insurance sector initially when there was no privatization there was no competition the different companies in insurance sector 
had to compete amongst themselves. But after the advent of privatization of insurance sector, the competition has increased. Now it means international competition. It has increased the level of competition between the insurers. Effects over government responsibility. It is because of the IRDI that the government is doing everything possible to ensure uniformity, accountability and responsibility in the insurance sector. Effects over banks and post offices. Insurers has resulted in giving security against any kind of uncertainties or risks. So, the insurance sector has become a popular medium for savings and investments. Effects over individual's life. Now, because of the awareness created by the IRDI and the policies introduced by it has resulted in a great impact on the life of the individual. Effect over the share market. Since the IRDA has introduced ULIP plans, the policy holders get investment and insurance in a single plan. More and more people are trying out the plan. Therefore, with the help of insurance products, they can now be raised more easily for the companies and has attached many persons indirectly with the activities of the share market. Effect over the economy of India. IRDI effects over the economic development of the country because money invested by the investors or the individuals in various type of insurance products has channelized the fund of country for a non-economic activity to economic activity and has made available to the government of a country in order to implement the various development activities in the country. So, these are the sectors where the IRDA has its effect almost everywhere. Maybe it is share market, maybe it is banking sector, maybe it is individual, maybe it is the governmental sectors. Everywhere it has effects over the various sectors. Now, discussing about the insurance ombudsman. The insurance ombudsman is an initiative by the government of India in order to ensure a cost effective, impartial and efficient settlement of grievance related to the insurance policies. Hence, if at all a policy holder faces an issue, they can file their complaints at zero costs at an office that covers their jurisdiction. Uh, once the grievance has been lost, the office of ombudsman arranging a hearing for the same. The hearing has to be attended by the representatives of the insurer and the complainant. Generally, the ombudsman declares the award within three months of the hearing. The insurance ombudsman is responsible to perform the following functions, conciliation and award making. Ombudsman is empowered to receive and lodge complaints as per the personal lines of the insurance from any person who has any grievance against any insurance company. The complaint may relate to any grievance against the insurance company in the form of any partial or total repudiation of claim and a dispute in respect of the premium paid or payable and a dispute on the legal construction of the policies and a delay in claim settlement and a non-issue of insurance document to the clients even after receipt of premium. So, these are something ways how the ombudsman can act upon and it can give redressal to the insurance policy holders. When to approach the insurance ombudsman? At what time you should approach the insurance ombudsman? If the insurance company has rejected the prior complaint and they did not resolve it to the insured's satisfaction or if the company did not respond to the complaint at all for 30 days or if the complaint pertains to any policy taken in capacity as an individual or if the value of the claim including expenses claimed is not above rupees 30 lakhs. In that situation, you can approach the insurance ombudsman and you can file your grievance. Recommendations of the ombudsman, it says that when a complaint is settled by way of insurance ombudsman, he is responsible to make recommendations that he finds fair as far as the case in concerned. Such a recommendation shall be made not later than 30 days and copies of the same are to be sent to both the aggrieved party and the insured company. 
the insurance ombudsman passes an award within three months from the receipt of the complaint from the insured. The awards are binding upon the insurer. If the insured is not satisfied with the ombudsman's award, he can approach other authorities like the consumer forums and court of law for his grievance redressal. Now coming to the conclusion point, we can say that an vital part of the economy, insurance needs to adopt periodically to the needs of its customer. A person ought to be cognizant of the need to its customers and a person ought to be cognizant of the options that are open to him concerning life and health insurance. Ensuring that policy holders interests are protected is a major responsibility of the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India. Even with the necessary adjustments, competition has intensified, but policy holders and insurers goals can still be met. So, we can say that ombudsmen's and these other authorities such as IRDI, they are very much needed in the time so that the interests of the policy holder as well as the company both can be protected and the competition between the companies can be intensified and goals of the policy holders and the insurers can be met. The system of insurance ombudsman has been serving its purpose of expeditiously and inexpensively resolving grievances of insurance consumers over the year. Im ombudsman is acting like a medium between insurer and the policy holders before opting for other grievance redressal mechanisms like consumer forums or uh, the court of law before approaching those forums the aggrieved person that is the insured person he can approach the ombudsman and can file his grievances that grievances should be filed in writing and the ombudsman will act upon it generally within a period of three months it will try to decide it based on these suggestions have been made for increased effectiveness in grievance redressal. The enhanced coverage of policies, increased kind of complainants who can approach the forum, inclusion of agents and intermediaries along with insurers to be complained against more number of grounds of complaint and higher pecuniary jurisdiction would definitely usher in a greater use of the system. So, we can say that the IRDA has been established for some betterment of the policy holders as well as the insurance sector also. Insurance companies are dealing these uh, day to day policies over the, the disputes between the insurers and the companies. These all are taken care of by the IRDA, I by creating the ombudsman and other authorities also. So, this is the effect of insurance and regulatory development authority that it regularize the insurance sector. Maybe by keeping the insurance sector intact, it regulates the activity of the insurance sector. As I told you that importantly and primarily it protects the interests of the policy holder and it has kept upon with its purpose. It has created the ombudsman, it has made various rules and regulations for keeping a check and balance, it decides the disputes very positively and in a speedy manner, it uh, guides the various insurance companies to tackle the issues, it asks the companies to clear the matters in a speedy manner to, um, uh, to deal with the claims in a speedy manner. So, these are certain effects which we can say 
that the IRDA has effect over the insurance market and due to the IRDI there is a transformation in the market due to the effects of this authority that maybe it is in the respect of marketing, maybe it is the insurance products, competitions and customer awareness. Companies have been asked to market their policies in an extensive manner but in a truthful way and to provide various kind of insurance products, various policies suiting the needs of everyone as per the age, as per the occupations and IRDA regulates the private sectors also. So, there is a sense of competitiveness among the insurance companies and obviously various schemes have been lost to create the consumer awareness also. Maybe it is at the end of the IRDI and maybe it enforces the companies to create consumer awareness by holding seminars, by creating advertisements or by issuing some pamphlets or anything like that which creates consumer awareness to the policy holders. And it also affects the development of insurance product by company. The company cannot act of its own, it cannot bring out a policy of its own will. First of all, it has to be discussed with the RDAI and if the RDAI is satisfied, then only that policy will come into the market and any policy that is coming to the market, it is secured policy. You have no worry that your money will be lost if you are investing or if you are getting that policy. So, it has effect over the development of any insurance policy which is brought out by the any insurance company. And when the companies are launching different schemes, there are different type of companies in the life insurance sector as well as the general insurance sector, maybe it is health center or maybe it is your property insurance sector or maybe it is your automobile in industry uh, insurance sector or maybe it is your life insurance sector. There is a competition in the companies, in the insurers which in turn indirectly or directly it benefits the policy holders or to say to the customers because there are many companies providing a single kind of product by different names and for this just to market their product, they give various benefits, various concessions to the customers to allure them to take their policies and this benefits the customers and in turn they got the benefit for that and indirectly it increases the competition between the companies and it has also effect over the government responsibility see whether the government is doing everything possible to ensure uniformity, accountability and responsibility in the insurance sector or not. So, various sectors are controlled and guided by the IRDAI when it comes to insurance sector. It affects the banking and post offices also as I told you that there are various type of insurance schemes in which not only you get the insurance cover, but you get the investment also and definitely you get the benefits of income tax act and indirectly the banks are get it, getting benefits of it. You are depositing your money with the insurance sector and that way the banks and the post offices are getting the flow from the funds from the banks and this flow is coming to the banks and uh, post offices from the insurance sector. So, we can say that it has a great impact on the life of an individual and if I am talking about IRDI, it regulates the insurance sector as a whole. It has a close check into the insurance sector and it ensures that the interest of the policy holders remain intact. It regulates every activity of the insurance sector. Now, if we 
talk about the rules and regulations of the insurance sector and uh, about the RDI. There are certain sections that we have discussed that are very important to reiterate if we are going to the concluding all things this that if any action is taken by the authority or the central government in good faith under the provisions no suit can be filed against the IRDI. So, if IRDI is working independently obviously there are chances of some mistakes or other activities which are not predictable in that situation if the act has been taken in good faith that is utmost good faith in that situation you cannot sue the IRDI or the government in that situation. But obviously it is not barred by law. So, we can say that if it takes any action which is not in accordance with the provisions of the act then the person may be that is insurer or that person may be the insured it has right to file a suit against the authority or against the government. In that situations, if we have discussed about the duties, powers and functions of the authority, we can safely conclude that IRDI issues the certificate of registrations to the insurers, it renews the insurers license, it modifies the insurers license, it has the power to withdraw the insurers license and even it can suspend or cancel the registration of any insurance company. And as usual, I would like to conclude it by saying that it protects the interests of the policy holders in matters concerning assignment of policies, nominations by the policy holders and surrender value of policy and other terms and contracts of the conditions of the insurance contract. And it also specify the code of conduct for loss accessors and in turn it promotes the efficiency in the conduct of insurance business. It controls, promotes and regulates professional organizations connected with the insurance and reinsurance business. So, the act that has been provided and which constitutes the IRDA that is the authority, it is a body corporate and it has a perpetual succession with a common seal, it has the contractual capacity and it can be sued and it can sue by its own name. So, by going through all these aspects, I am sure that you have come to know about the functions, powers and uh, how what are the effects of the IRDI over the different insurance companies, insureds and the policies. So, we can safely conclude that this is the authority which has all the powers to regulate the insurance sector in our country. A very thanks to you for listening to me.